Hello, my name is Matthew Heinrichs, and today I'm going to be talking about the idea of consenting to colonialism based on Bruce Gilley's case for colonialism. Uh, first, I want to talk about the fact that colonialism does exist today. It d exists in a different form from when France, Spain, Britain, the Netherlands, and other European powers were taking over uh, different countries in the world, be that in Latin America, or in Africa, Asia, or really anywhere else. Uh, today we see a different form of colonialism that is still extremely difficult to deal with and also the fact that Bruce Gillies claim that you can consent to colonialism and have that work that that idea basically isn't possible. I want to argue that that idea at least in today's climate will not be possible. So first we still see private businesses that are in the world and have taken over that uh, role of colonial power, uh, not to the same degree as governments did at one point, but it's they are still there. As Anders talked about with ExxonMobil taking over a small area in Mozambique for extracting natural gas, uh, this was done with the idea that it would bring jobs to the locals in a very poor region of Mozambique, when it in fact did not. Um, basically the area has remained extremely poor. Uh, and is being exploited by ExxonMobil. And this is a practice that isn't at all uniquely ExxonMobil's practice, but is a practice done by many, many companies throughout the world, basically every multinational organization, uh, minus a few. And so you'll see deforestation, extraction of natural gas, uh, cheap labor, and other ways of taking over these countries. It's also important to remember that the people in these countries never really uh, consented to these companies coming in, that it was the governments who were being paid the money uh, to allow the companies to come in, but people are not really benefiting from this, which is extremely problematic because this is reminiscent of when the European powers had control. Now, colonies still exist throughout the world today. The U.S. has several colonies, including Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, Guam, the Northern Mariana Islands, American Samoa, among some others in the Pacific Ocean. Um, you also have the French Dom Tom, or Département d'Outre-mer, the overseas departments. Um, many of these are in the Caribbean and in Oceania and in the Indian Ocean. And then you also have the British, who have many islands throughout the world and small territories. Gibraltar is one that comes to mind, Turks and Caicos as well. Um, and this is an idea that these countries have, or these areas, these territories, have decided to remain part of their colonial power. That Puerto Rico has decided to remain a part of the United States rather than have independence. Now, I cannot speak for the French and the British situations, but for the American situation, especially with Puerto Rico, this is not a full consent to the colonizing power. Puerto Rico is in extreme amounts of debt to the United States, um, has had many of its resources extracted by either Spain or the United States, depends on time period and who was in power at the time in Puerto Rico. And you also see that there is no real representation for Puerto Ricans in the United States government, that they have a senator who's not able to vote. So this goes against the idea of taxation without representation, which is a founding principle for the U.S. that the whole reason the U.S. became a country is that it wanted to be represented uh, in the British Parliament and couldn't be, so they revolted. Um, for Puerto Rico, they don't have that vote, so they are taxed without any sort of representation within the United States government. Uh, so at what point are they actually consenting to being colonized? There are strong independence movements in Puerto Rico still today uh, that would really make you question whether or not there's actual consent for the U.S. to be there. Uh, finally, there are these memories of colonialism that really make it difficult for people to want to be colonized or have charter cities from the Europeans in their country. The memories of 
the Mau Mau massacre, the Algerian massacres by the French, the massacre in India by the British, and so many others, as well as the humiliation of the Belgians uh, in the Congo, um, and the exploitation of natural resources throughout Africa and throughout really the whole world, would really make most people uh, question whether or not they would even want to consider being colonized again. That there would be no movement to be recolonized based on just these terrible memories that are the main focus of many governments and education systems throughout the world. Uh, so hopefully that gives a better idea of why this idea of consenting to colonialism is really a poor idea, a poorly founded idea, and Bruce Gilley's argument really doesn't work in this case. That most people, based on all of these reasons, would not be able or willing to consent to being colonized again. Thank you.